Welcome to episode 450 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger of SellingYourScreenplay.com. Today I have on director Matt Eskandari, who just directed a Kevin Dillon, Bruce Willis film called Wire Room. It's a contained action thriller film. We talk about how he got involved in this project and how he typically is brought on to projects like this, as well as his thoughts about why this particular screenplay worked so well and ended up getting produced. So stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast, and then just look for episode number 450. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address, and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So a quick few words about what I'm working on. I'm still working hard getting ready for the film festival, um, but there are some big updates this past week. I did launch the website this week. That's at www.sixfigurefilmfestival.com. We have the full and locked schedule, so you can check that out. Our opening night films are all set. It's October 7th at 7.30 p.m. We have a cool short film by director Darren Coyle, and a fun comedy feature made during COVID called Christmas Staycation. I'm going to be doing a screening of my own film, The Rideshare Killer, at 10 p.m. on that opening night, that opening Friday night. So if you have have any interest in seeing my film, do check out the website for the ticket link. And then we have a bunch of other films screening throughout the weekend. Again, there's lots of information about the films on the websites. Um, We've posted log lines, posters, just basic stuff all about these films. We're um, doing a table read on Sunday, October 9th at 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. I'm going to choose one of the top scripts from this year's contest to read live with actors. It's going to be probably a writer who, um, you know, we'll look at the top scripts and I'll probably just start at the top of the list and then find a writer that can that lives in L.A. or, or is local um, and can get here and, and actually attend, to attend this reading because that's really part of the process um, is giving notes and, and getting notes as, as the writer. I think it will be valuable for, for some individual to have their script read you know by actors and and really get those notes as I said, we're going to um, choose a script once we get through some of these um, screenplays. We're still actually reviewing screenplays, and we'll have those announcements shortly. If you've never been to a table read like the, like this, it's a great tool for screenwriters, so I definitely um, would recommend checking it out. Basically, we're going to have about a dozen actors up on stage reading the various roles from the screenplay, and then once the screenplay is read, the actors sit down, and the writer goes up on stage and listens to the notes. The um, there's I'm going to invite a bunch of um, other writers and and industry judges to come and and be a part of the audience. So we'll be listening to the um, to, to the to the reading by the actors. And then once the um, reading is done, then we will actually offer the notes. The writers, the industry judges, we will start offering notes. Um, the writer will go up on stage and get these notes. Um, it can be a little unner of nerving if you are the writer, um, but it is really a great exercise. Um, the writer doesn't respond to the notes at this point. They're just sitting on stage. I'll be up on stage as well, just sort of calling people and keeping things organized. But the writer will basically be up there just listening, perhaps writing stuff down. Um, but this is is actually not the time to it's very our, our instinct when you get up on stage is to start defending the script and defending the material and explaining things if things didn't seem um, clear and concise to people um, but that's not actually what this exercise is for it's really for the writer to just hear the notes and get some consensus it'll be interesting you know you'll be able to hear other people's notes as if you're in the audience and sort of say yeah I agree with those notes oh those are good notes or oh I didn't think of that or perhaps maybe you did think of that and you're giving similar notes and that's good for a writer 
writer to hear um, that multiple people are coming up with very similar notes because those are usually really the notes that writers should be concentrating on. Anyways, it is a little unnerving for the writer, but as I said, it's a really great exercise. Um, some of the actors, as I said, they will, um, some of them probably will just go home after the reading, but probably some of them will sit down in the audience and then they'll have comments as well. And again, this is just really valuable um, information because the actors, you know, come at this from a very different perspective than the writers. So, you know, you could potentially get some notes from these actors um, and they their notes will typically be very much geared towards, you know, the role that they play. They'll be very actory notes, but those are great notes to get because um, you want actors to read this script and respond to it. So having some, you know, trained actors give you notes, um, again, is another big part of this process. Anyways, um, again, I will invite as many writers and interview judges out, so it should be um, a really interesting session just getting notes. Um, if this sounds like um, something you'd be interested in, do check out the um, website. There are ticket links. Um, I think it will be a fun and educational experience, really, for any writer. Um, so if you're in the Los Angeles area, area definitely um, check this out and, and perhaps think about attending. Um, also, we have a little sign-up um, form on the website, email sign-up form. You just put in your name and email address, and um, you know we won't. I won't be sending out um, selling your screenplay updates to that list. So if you want to get um, get on the film festival list, do sign up there because I'll be sending out you know specific updates about the festival to that list. Um, and especially as the years go on. Um, you know, next year I'll start with a list, you know, we'll have a bunch of people so I can sort of announce the festival. And again, it's just a good way for me to start to separate selling your screenplay from this festival. Um, hopefully the festival can kind of have a life of its own. And again, it's geared towards more indie film than specifically screenwriting. Although ultimately I would like to turn this into a very, um, you know, writer centric film festival. Anyways, I hope um, hope I get to meet some of the folks who listen to this podcast at the festival. Again, if you're in the LA area, do consider coming out. And again, just check out our website for all of the details, sixfigurefilmfestival.com to learn more. Anyways, that's a big thing I've been working on. Now let's get into the main segment. Today, I am interviewing director Matt Eskandari. Here is the interview. Welcome, Matt, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. Real appreciate coming on the show with me today. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Yeah, it's a, sort of a, a long journey, but I'll try to condense it in an interesting sort of way. But, um, you know, I immigrated to, to America as a child from Iran mm -hmm. and um, I grew up in California and uh, growing up, I always was interested in filmmaking and films and art. And I went to USC film school, studied film there graduated and um, I did a couple kind of short films that won some awards, got some attention. And then from there, it's sort of my career sort of had its path forward from there. I mean, I did some indie movies, mostly in the horror thriller genre. You know, I did this film that got me a lot of attention, 12 Feet Deep. It was a contained thriller about two sisters trapped in a pool. And from there, that kind of opened the doors and I was able to get, like land like an agent, a manager who were able to kind of get my foot in the door with Lionsgate and get basically my career kind of jump started with uh, these last few years when I've directed four movies now with Bruce Willis um, and Lionsgate and Vertigo mm -hmm. Entertainment. So it's been, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. I mean, I feel like everybody has their own really unique journey, but um, you know, you can always learn from somebody else's. And yeah. Yeah. Ways. And just take us through that step from the short films to actually getting paid to direct a feature film. Um, were you writing scripts? Were you sending out your reel? At this point, you had a bunch of shorts, so you had your reel. Just what were those steps from going from sort of a hobbyist to a professional? I definitely was writing a lot. I feel like that's one of the most important things as, a, as an up-and-coming filmmaker, screenwriter specifically. You have to write. I mean, you're not going to understand the, the industry and the process unless you're actually doing it. And mm -hmm. I think one of the huge um, things that I learned early on was not only you're like, especially if you want to be a, a successful screenwriter, not only are you watching movies, which a lot of screenwriters do read the screenplays, read the specs. Sometimes I would see a movie come out and I'm like, I wouldn't even watch the movie. I would just watch the, I would read the spec hmm. that got picked up and bought based on that and that story. And I'd be like, Oh, that's why that movie got picked up. Okay. I get it now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would see things in the spec that didn't even make it on screen, but I was like, okay, that worked on the page. And I wonder why it didn't get translated on screen. And the learning process of that mm -hmm. felt like was a huge uh, stepping stone for me. It helped me understand why certain scripts were selling, why some weren't. And, um, and at the same time, I was writing a lot of scripts, working with writing partners. 
And, you know, just like a lot of other writers, I have a huge drawer of unproduced screenplays mm-hmm. that are just yeah, like yeah. collecting dust. And it's like, wait, man, those are, you know, but I look back at them now and I'm like cringing at how bad the, the writing is in them or the mm-hmm. story like sense or and whatnot. So it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a process really. I mean, and that transition from, like you said, hobbyist to professional, it's it, it, a lot of times it's not just like one moment or one thing that does that. Right. I mean, there was a huge period of my career where, you know, I was doing really well and I thought things were going to take off. And then next thing you know, I'm going two, three years without anything. Right. And I'm not, uh, am I professional still or what, what, what happened, mm-hmm. you know, can't get a movie off the ground. So, so it's like, you know, in your career, looking back, there will always be ups and downs and twists and turns mm-hmm. and, almost like a, a good a, like a good screenplay you're gonna have to kind of yeah. go with the flow and, and see what we mm-hmm. can learn from it yeah yeah sound advice for sure so let's dig into your latest film wire room starring bruce willis and kevin dillon maybe just to start out you can give us a quick pitch or log line what is this film all about yeah basically it's about this rookie uh wire room agent who's his first day on the job and he shows up there his first day on the job to basically surveil this drug cartel member and on that first day, all hell breaks loose when this drug cartel member is attacked by these, these bad guys. And he has to keep the target alive. And he decides to break the rules and talk to the target. So it turns into this very kind of tense suspense thriller, uh, contains suspense thriller between the agent and the cartel member and the back and forth that happens there. And um, one of the things I, I, I think is a huge thing for, for a lot of your uh, podcast listeners is the script itself was written by a, a writer who had a experience working in a wire room mm. who actually had experience um, being a Homeland Security agent. So when I picked up that script initially, it had so much authenticity to it that it, w- it hooked you right away. Right. So that whole, that whole adage of, you know, write what you know is definitely it, it does pay off. Right. Because mm-hmm. if, if, if it's something that you know really well, you bring an authenticity to that voice. And that's something you can't fake. Mm-hmm. Now, the flip side to that, as you're saying that, and I actually clicked on on um, the rise. I can't remember his name. I clicked on his things. And this is his only writing credit. So the flip side is it's very authentic because he has real world experience in this. The flip side, of course, is that he doesn't have a lot of experience writing the screenplay. Were there some issues, structural issues, just sort of screenwriting 101 issues that um, that he had, even though he has authenticity? And let's just sort of di- dig into the script. What was sort of that development process like once you came on to it no i mean to to be honest i think that i mean i I can't speak for his background or whatnot but the script worked on a on a very sound structural level story level and i think that i doubt this was his first script i mean this Mm -hmm. may be his first spec that he sold but it's one of those things where this is probably his 20th script Mm -hmm. and it was like one of those things where he finally hit one out of the ballpark because it was something very authentic and the hook was just something it felt fresh it felt new it felt different it felt like okay i've seen movie scenes set in wire rooms specifically but i've never seen an entire movie where the conceit the hook is you're just in the wire room with this one guy who is you know on this journey Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean when as soon as i picked up that script i could tell that you know it's something it wasn't a first draft it wasn't something that you know you just not it was something that he'd worked a lot on to get Mm -hmm. that place where you know, I can read it in a first read and be like, okay, this is, this works on very sound fundamental levels. I mean, obviously some tweaks are going to need to be made, but, but it worked well on the page. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get brought into this project? What, how does that work? Is this something your agent, he, he, people are submitting to him and then he says, Hey, what about this project? Walk through that, that, that sort of, how does that actually work? So for me, I'm at that phase of my career where producers will bring projects to me. So pr- producers will say, hey, I'm directing or I'm uh, producing this one film. What do you think? Well, I want to bring you on to direct. And so I'll get, you know, every every few months or whatnot, different producers will reach out to my manager or reach out to me directly and say they got the script that they're working on. They're thinking about casting X, Y and Z. Would I want to be attached to it to help get the project moving along? So, yeah, so it's one of those instances where, uh, you know, the producers, they're like, oh, we're thinking about taking this to Lionsgate. I know you've done a couple of movies with, you know, a few movies with them. Is this a project that interests you? And then, you know, and I read the script and I was like, oh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I like this script a lot. It's it, it hooked me from from the beginning and and um, it's something I'd definitely be interested in. And from there, it's a negotiation process of 
you know, attaching me to the project, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and, and it, that's, and that, that's not the only way that I get projects. I mean, that's just one Avenue, mm -hmm. but there are, you know, writers submit to me as well as, uh, you know, my manager will find scripts and get them to me and stuff. So there's different ways that the projects mm -hmm. get set up at that, at that stage. So it sounds like in the case of wire room, this was a, pr a producer that had the project and then he reached out to you to see if he could attach you as a director. Now, what was in place when he reached out to you? Did he already have Bruce Willis and Kevin Dillon on the, no, so, no, so you were the, you were the attached, first piece. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm sort of you know, one of the first pieces that falls into play because then they can take it to a sales agency. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, we're thinking about casting a Bruce Willis or a Mel or a XYZ star to, to, to take to play this role. And then from there, they'll reach out to me. Like right now, I'm in the process, very similar situation. There's a couple of scripts that I'm semi attached to now, and they're considering going out to some, to, some A list stars to attach to. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's sort of a, it's an interesting process. It's something that, you know, I, I didn't know existed. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. And, and I'm curious, um, you know, you've worked with Bruce Willis a number of times before. So I wonder how much that impacts a producer looking you up. I mean, obviously he likes your directing and, you know, just what you do with the camera, but how much do you think sort of these practical experience sort of plays into you're getting chosen over say another director? No, I feel like it has a huge, it's a huge uh, advantage. I mean, people can look at my, you know, Demography and be like, oh, he's worked with Bruce, a lister. So he, he knows how to, you know, he, he got along with him. They've mm -hmm. worked out well. And, you know, so if we go to Bruce for another movie, then obviously they get along already. They have this prior relationship. So yeah, that definitely is something that um, it helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. Was there any issues? Um, so it sounds like you really liked the script. It sounded like it was pretty buttoned up, um, you know, authentic and all that. But were there any issues? Were there, was there anything that you thought needed to be changed? And was there any back and forth with um, with the writer? I mean, there was dialogue and whatnot, exposition that I tried to tighten up when, I, when we did our initial pass with the writer. And I think the biggest question mark was, um, you know, with a the, with the story like this, there's the backstory of the, of the hero and how much of it do you want to reveal um, how much do you want to keep it ambiguous? Is there enough time in 90 minutes to dive into that sort of story and backstory? So uh, I remember on the on the page there was there was a lot more there than than we ended up putting on screen, but I felt like it it, it didn't lend itself to it in, in a way. I mean, I, I kind of like the idea of leaving a little backstory more ambiguous and sort of leading the audience with some breadcrumbs in terms of who this character was, but not just spilling it all in this movie. Mm -hmm. to, it wasn't revealed in a, you know, in an organic way that felt right for the situation that he was in. So it was, it was a back and forth there with the writer to try to find that and try to discover it. And, you know, and it's specifically the biggest change when we cast Kevin Dillon, initially the, the main protagonist was like some 19 year old young kid right out of Homeland Security. And I was like, well, that's going to change the story a bit now yeah. that we got Kevin Dillon. So, you know, the writer had to go back and do a fresh pass where, it sort of integrated the fact that, okay, this guy's got some experience already, but why is he here? And then he had to sort of rework the backstory there. And I mm. thought that it was, it was interesting in that it made the film different because I felt like we had already seen that other story before, the fresh 19-year-old rookie. This was something unique and different. I felt like that added another layer of uniqueness to the concept. Mm -hmm. So over your career, you've worked with a number of different writers. What are some, some advice you could give to writers when they're working with a director? Are there some things that you notice from writers that, wow, this is a great writer to work with. He takes notes. Well, maybe just give us a little advice. What, what's your advice to screenwriters who are working with a director who's giving them notes? Yeah. I mean, I feel like a, a good writer understands uh, the production process process as well i mean the more you can understand because once you you know it's one thing to write a script and just to write it spec it out you got this idea you have this world that you've created it's another thing that now you have a director and a producer on board and now we're trying to actually execute this script right so what are the constraints of actually shooting a movie and understanding okay we're, we're okay when i go to a writer and say okay we got bruce for x amount of days or x many hours you're gonna have to take all his scenes and make him fit into this amount of days. So do you understand that process? Or mm -hmm. do you know how to do that? And it, without just slashing pages, how can you make that character work by understanding the process and the constraints that I'm giving, which is you got this many hours to shoot with this actor or this many days to shoot this action scene. So mm -hmm. I feel like the more that a writer can 
kind of understand production and, and, and the issues and, and things that a director and filmmaker has to deal with, the better writer they'll be. Because once you get to that phase where you're working with a director on a film, um, you're going to need to know that, right? Because at that point, it doesn't matter how, what, you can't just come up with random ideas at that point. Now it's, okay, this is what we've given. How can we make it work with the constraints that we've been given? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I talk about on the podcast is sort of like genre requirements. And oftentimes I'll talk to distributors or producers and they'll have some pretty um, clear requirements, especially a movie like this. That's sort of an action film. Um, You know, you hear just common knowledge, you know, or common, you know, just every 10 minutes you need an action scene. How do you approach some of these things, sort of these very formulaic genre requirements that you run into? Um, How do you try and, you know, lean into them, but give them a fresh spin and what's your sort of approach to some of these sort of more template type things yeah i mean there's definitely a lot of times when you're you know when it's a genre piece there is very clear studio distributor sales agent requirements right i mean bruce has to be in 20 minutes or you know you're casting this a-list star he needs to be this many minutes and there needs to be this many action scenes and and a lot of times it does create you know challenges right i mean it's challenging you to like okay how do we do this in a unique way how do we do this in a different way or how can I spin this in, 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 into something that is still fresh and exciting, but obviously meets the distributor's requirements. So a lot of that comes down to, you know, just working with the script and finding those moments and finding those beats. And, you know, sometimes I'll make the conscious decision to cut something knowing that later on, okay, well, you know, yeah, we're, we're going to have to condense. We'll have this little action beat here, but, you know, let's make sure that in 10 more pages, something bigger even happens so that it pays off even more. So you have to really kind of massage that, finesse that. And I feel feel like, you know, when you're given that sort of a requirement, you have to just do your best to work within those confines. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, you've worked with a number of, of, you know, big stars. um, And this is more of a, just a pure directing question. Um, How do you get these guys to come on to your movie and give their a game as an actor when a lot of these films are way smaller than some of the big hits that they've worked on? Um, You know, and a lot of these stars, you know, they dabble in sort of the smaller movies, um, but how do you get them to show up and bring their a game? I mean, these are very talented. It's like a thoroughbred racehorse, you know, really getting them out there to show what you can do as a director and what they can do as an actor yeah i mean it comes down to really uh they have to trust that you have a strong vision as a director and you're there to to do something of quality and elevated right i mean i remember when i was doing um the first film that i did with bruce was this film called trauma center and uh you know i was looking at the script and you know i it was too late in the process he'd already shown up and we were shooting and you know i noticed he was doing all these long exposition scenes and i was like why did we have Bruce here doing all these long exposition scenes? I mean, like this guy's a legend, man. Let's give him only money scenes and like mm-hmm. really fun <laughs> scenes and character-driven emotional stuff. Because I noticed whenever there was character-driven emotional scenes, Bruce would turn it on. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's what he responds to. So, so the next film I went back that I was I knew when I knew I was going to do another film with Bruce. I went back and I worked with the writer, and we really made sure that. We're not giving Bruce five page monologues about exposition in the story, right? Mm-hmm. We're just giving him character moments and emotional turns and interesting sort of character arcs and stuff. And, and I noticed it right away when Bruce showed up on set for that second film that I made with him, Survive the Night. He was just, he was already on. He was like, oh, his manager came up to me. He's like, yeah, Bruce would like the script and this and that. And I was like, oh, okay, hmm. okay, cool, cool. And he, usually when he's done rap shooting, he just jumps on his private jet and takes off. So on that one, he sat there and was like just hanging out with crew and he wanted to stay longer. And I was like, man, I wish we had more seats to shoot with Bruce. Like, what's going on? <laughs> just just aim the right camera now. in his direction. Yeah. Exactly. Just point the camera at him right now and just shoot something, you know. But it comes down to the page, like what's on the page and, and understanding that, you know, actors want to work on quality material, even though mm-hmm. it's a tight schedule, a tight shoot. You want to do, you want to bring to them stuff that they're they respond to, right? So I think a part of that is working with somebody first time and then seeing mm-hmm. what they respond to and then from there knowing like, okay, this is, this is what they like and let's tailor that to that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just like to end the interviews by asking the guests if there's anything they've seen recently that they thought was really great. HBO, Netflix, are there anything, um, anything you're watching currently that you could recommend to a screenwriting audience? Yeah, well, recently I watched uh, that action film, Nobody. I don't know if you guys saw that. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was a fun one. I thought that that was... 
a simple concept and it felt sort of like, oh, I, and I, I see the trailers and I go, I've seen this before, but it was just so well executed. The action was so well done. And the, the main protagonist, there was just something so interesting about him where he's just like this average guy who's thrown in this situation mm-hmm. and you really step into his shoes and you, and you're, you're on the journey with him and he's not John Wick, right? He's not beating the living, but Jesus out of everybody. I mean, he's getting the beat, he's getting the crap beating him out of him too. And I thought that was cool that you got mm-hmm. to see, you know, this sort of average looking dude who's getting the, the, the crap beating out of him the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as, but he dishes it out too. So it was a fun movie. I thought it was, it was, it was, it was quirky sort mm-hmm. of action um, and that's the type of stuff that I thought was fun and, and unique. So if anybody can write something like that. I think it's, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great recommendation. How can people see the wire room? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like for yeah, it? It's, it's released September 2nd on uh, select theaters as well okay. as Apple TV and most okay. streaming platforms. So you should, you should be able to catch it on like Amazon prime, you know, iTunes, all that. Perfect. Perfect. And what's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing and follow your career, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anything you're comfortable sharing, I'll put in the show notes. Yeah, no, go ahead. Follow me on um, Instagram. My Instagram is Matt Eskandari. So just find me on there. And I usually okay. post, you know, filmmaking tips and turns and things. And just follow me on there. Okay, perfect. Well, Matt, I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me today. Good luck with this film and good luck with all your future films as well. Hey, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on Thank and uh, look forward to chatting again in the future. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Later. Bye. Bye. A quick plug for the SYS Screenwriting Analysis Service. It's a really economical way to get a high quality professional evaluation on your screenplay. When you buy our three pack, you get evaluations at just $67 per script for feature films and just $55 for teleplays. All the readers have professional experience reading for studios, production companies, contests, and agencies. You can read a short bio on each reader on our website, and you can pick the reader who you think is the best fit for your script. Turnaround time is usually just a few days, but rarely more than a week. The readers will evaluate your script on six key factors, concept, character, structure, market ability, tone, and overall craft, which includes formatting, spelling, and grammar. Every script will get a grade of pass, consider, or recommend, which should help you roughly understand where your script might rank if you were to submit it to a production company or agency. We can provide an analysis on features or television scripts. We also do proofreading without any analysis. We will also look at a treatment or outline and give you the same analysis on it. So if you're looking to vet some of your project ideas, this is a great way to do it. We will also write your logline and synopsis for you. You can add this logline and synopsis writing service to an analysis, or you can simply purchase this service as a standalone product. As a bonus, if your screenplay gets a recommend or a consider from one of our readers, you get to list the screenplay in the SYS Select database, which is a database for producers to find screenplays and a big part of our SYS Select program. Producers are in the database searching for material on a daily basis. So it's another great way to get your material in front of them. As a further bonus, if your script gets a recommend from one of our readers, your screenplay will get included in our monthly best of newsletter. Each month we send out a newsletter that highlights the best screenplays that have come through our script analysis service. This is monthly newsletter that goes out to our list of over 400 producers who are actively looking for material. So again, this is another great way to get your material out there. So if you want a professional evaluation of your screenplay at a very reasonable price, check out www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing director Alec Bursell and producer Jeffrey Allard. They just did a sci-fi feature film called The Alternate. It's a contained thriller where a man finds a portal to a parallel dimension and gets to view his own life in this parallel parallel dimension. And it's a really fascinating conversation. Um, Ulrich, as the director and um, you know one of the writers, um, really spearheaded this project. And they really discuss, Jeffrey and Ulrich, really discuss in some detail their relationship, how they met, and um, sort of how it functions 
functions. I found it really interesting just to hear Jeffrey talk about it. Um, Jeffrey is a very experienced um, producer. He he put together the remake actually of the um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre that was done in 2003 and has done a bunch of films like that since. Um, he's really a finance guy, a business guy. Um, so he's got a really interesting perspective on films, especially low budget films like um, what Ulrich and he just produced. Um, so again, a fascinating, um, fascinating insight into sort of a producer's mind as well as as Ulrich's mind, um, just getting his his thoughts on the film and the project, and then ultimately what he did to get this thing produced and and how he was able to meet Jeffrey again, a very very experienced um, experienced experienced producer. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's our show. Thank you for listening.